it sounds and smells like happiness. So you're expert on happiness? Believe me, your cooking is music, Nana Dora. Hoy, don't flatter me, Nanita. Can I have you ruin Nana Dora? So you want to burn your nose or flavor my turon with your knees? I'm just saying hello, Nana Dora. If you must know, uh, I'm actually off to a, a business adventure. Business adventure, huh? Hoy, aren't you supposed to be in school? I um stop school. Stop school? I'm on my way to some uh, business, that's why. But all's well, so can I get one on credit? Stop school on its last month, Santissima. Yes, stop school. I will be a working girl soon, you know. How old are you? 12. And what happened to your arms and foot? Accident. Cooking. Hoy, sit down and help me roll. Why don't you have children? I am as barren as soup without water, so don't ask me that question again. I'm sorry. Hmm? Ah, Nenita, what can I do for you? And how is your brother Elvis? Very well, thank you, Miss Phoebe. Elvis can forget Basilio Profendo's pil palita. And he says, you are very nice and very beautiful too. I sus, he's so cute, just adorable. Miss Phoebe? Yes, Nenita? I, I know, uh, I mean, I heard. Come in by the way, now how rude of me. I know, your mate left yesterday. I know, it's hard to run a household without one. What would you busy becoming a nurse and all that? And your mother and father working hard and all that. So I think you need help badly. Your situation is dire, but I cook good. I wash clothes even better. I clean with my heart and soul. I can be trusted. I won't ever let you down. I mean, I need a job. Is everything alright, Nini? You need a mate. No, Nini, you're too young. You're still in school. Just tonight, Miss Phoebe, just tonight. I will cook and clean and wash for you. Just a one-off job. Just tonight. Do they know you're here? No, my mother and sibling are in the city. My father? I don't know. Perhaps looking for a job. Okay, why don't you help me cook dinner then? Eat with me and maybe you can clean up after. I must be at the hospital at 9. Where have you been, you brat? Where have you been? Answer me. You good for nothing. Where have you been? We were worried sick. Your mother is still out looking for you. How could you do this to us? I, I was just next door, Papa. Yes, just next door, Papa. I was busy, so I didn't. I was, I should have. What? I was walking. I was not doing anything bad or anything that you don't. Where did you go after school? I, I didn't what? go. What? I'm not going anymore. What? I will have you now, Papa. What? I will walk like you. What? I will bring home many like you. What? Hey, Mama. Mama, I can explain. I was... Two slaps on each cheek sent me reading. I hit the table, fell to the floor. Love you. Fat and thin and peeling knots scattered around the room. All the kids scrambled to grab what they could. She seized me again by the shoulders, drugged me towards the wall and slammed me there. Breathe knocked out of me. I slid to the floor. She kicked me again and again, then she searched me the room for the proverb yellow I crawled out of her way. But she was quicker. She grabbed me the stack of plates and hurled them at me, catching me on the back. I heard the shattering at my chest, hitting the floor, in the rain of shards. I couldn't get up, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't cry. Is it possible that God the Father sometimes feels too late because too many crossed lines? Why don't you just kill her? So when is it Juma Naimarin? End of summer. My father knows a midwife who makes house calls so we can get her for free. I'll talk to her. No thanks. It's, it's rather small. I know. Sige, pack all your 
clothes, Nanita. But she can come home every weekend. No, keep her. Pregnant women ask for sorry things. Stealing the mangoes was easy. I was alone. Through the mango tree leaves, through all the edible shrubs and vines, I spied for the flash of paleness. Boy Hapon was nowhere to be seen. With a bunch of green mangoes, I fell straight into the arms of the palest man I'd ever seen. A vacant pail, like paper that you want to quickly write on. We stared at each other and held my breath. No, he was not a young boy, as we had suspected from his name. I took in the lined, longish face with high cheekbones, the eyes that slope upwards and the very big ears. You will have long life, I stammered. You want long life? I was suddenly fearful. This wrinkled man whispers, This man is not quite complete in the head. This man has no father or mother or siblings and such. This man didn't come from anyone. This man is a ghost. I, I'm sorry, accident, just accident. If you want, ask. One day, I was bringing stolen green mangoes. Mother was peeling sugar bananas. I wanted to ask where they came from and whatever she could do with them. But remembered I was there to make peace. I held out the mangoes instead, but her eyes refused to leave her chore. She was speeding with some difficulty. The bananas were mostly all skin, so I laid my offerings to the table and asked, They are upstairs? I moved towards the ceiling, but she stopped me. Your siblings are resting, don't disturb me. And father? She laughed derision evident. Ha uh ha, -huh. somewhere dreaming for a job. He tries. Again, she laughed, saying, Ha ha ha, I know. He does, I do. I whispered to myself, Tomorrow I will her back. Tomorrow I stared at her back. Mother was so thin and so pregnant. I brought you green mangoes, mama. Mother accused me of stealing the green mangoes. She said I was a thief, a shame to our family. She sent all my offering back. Later in the day, I went neighboring next door. My first attempt since the green mango disaster. I took home my first full wage, all of 20 pesos, and the sweetest condol and various savory dishes, and some clothes for the night. Mrs. Valenzuela said I should visit my family, perhaps sleep at home, because it was the eve of the San Nicolas fiesta. I should be with my family at least for the night. So I cleaned the house and the garden, and cooked most of the feast for the next day. I'm sleepy here tonight, isn't that great? But your siblings have been sleeping comfortably with more room. Marine, how could you? I bought American foods with Nanita's salary. How could you, Gable? Every cent of your daughter's hard-earned labor is not for you to splurge on this to be. But it was a bargain, very cheap, two for the price of one, and I thought, I thought for once our kids can taste something from America. So your taste has gone ambitious? Because your daughter is slaving away? Ay, Maring, just a little pleasure. For the kids, Maring, don't you understand? Just a little pleasure. You and your little pleasure, look where it got us. Don't, Maring, please. Not in this way, not our promise of joy. Whose joy, Gable? Whose promise? And when did you ever keep your promises? Oh, I hate a lot of you. My family had just started lunch. That's mine. No mine. I got it first. My mine. Shut up. Mother ordered and father tried to placate Clara while dipping into the bowl. I'm sure there's something nicer here for you. But I saw it fast, Nilo said, trying to grab the piece of meat in turn. But Junia began licking it all over, saying, You still want? You still want it? Clara began to cry. Nilo chanted, Greedy, greedy! The two youngest joined in, banging their hands on the table. Stop acting like pigs! No, we're not. This is big. Are you answering back? I didn't say anything, Mama. I'm just eating, as you can see. So you're challenging me now, are you, Junior? Maring, Maring. You shot up too. So, Junior, you think you can challenge me now? Is that it? That chero ka. You've been acting for weeks now. What are you trying to prove, you stupid pig? We all gasped in horror as Junior pushed her away, then dropped on all fours, searching for the meat on the floor. Taken aback by her sense defiance, 
Mother seemed for a moment unsure, as if her fury had felt her. Then she began to kick him, screaming, Pig, pig, worthless pig! I thought my lens would bust because I was suddenly falling from the sky and the air was rushing past me. I could not catch it just as no one could catch me, no one. So my back would break and no one could make it better again. So I found myself striding up to her and pushing, just pushing her to the wall. And she was looking at me, really looking now. And I could see the shock in her eyes. But I could not stop screaming, I could not stop. Nini! It was father. Nini, Nini! I could see mother crouch against the wall, breathing hard and holding her belly, staring at Junior, gnawing at the bone. I retraced my step to the door without looking back. Someone was shaking me awake, calling out my name, Nini, then Ninita, then Nini again, as if the color was slipping in out of the endearment. I turned away from the voice, wishing it would slip out of uncertainty, but it became more insistent. Sprawled on my chest, I felt two pinpoints of pain there, as if my heart had grown a twin overnight, perhaps from too many romances in that house, in that dream, for it was a dream, wasn't it? Wake up, Nining, wake up! You have to go home, Nining, now! It's born, Nining! I was quickly out of the door with Clara, gripping my hands as if he would crush it and say, It's now moving, Nini, it's now moving. My heart pounded as I took in the shock the blue of my family. We are only six again, I thought, and it was my fault. I pushed her, I killed her. You'll take care of her, Nini, won't you? That's a good girl. While my siblings look on as far as away possible from the bloody sheets on the floor. Will she die? What do we do? We will do as father said. We must have a coffin. It's the prettiest thing in the house. Here, she will sleep here. Kanda, I will be back, I said heading for the door. That summer, I understood that father's love would never be enough for our mother, and my siblings and I could not make up for this lack. Each time one of us was bored, she seemed so hunger for more replenishment, and desperately so, as if we were depleting her coffers of affection. Had the newborn been alive, it would have emptied it, but thank God, we were only six again, saved from the seventh hunger. Later after the funeral, while I anguished that I caused my sister's death, a sense of shameful relief sneaked in sometimes, especially when I watched my siblings eat always arguing as to who got more. Mother stay in a hospital for a week and a half, fighting for her life, and we did not even know it. The baby had been dead in her womb for days. Father refused to take us to the hospital. The world would be alright again at home. Father was back at his old job in the chain's construction, and mother was coming home, saved. All our apprehensive love to our mother in a hot bath and a little heart. I laid it at the foot of the mat, keeping my eyes down. I didn't know how to begin. Love filled out. It was as if someone else had spoken. The voice was repeated so unlike her. I brought food and a bath, Mama. Closer, let me look at you. I didn't mean to, Mama. I'm sorry, I never meant to. Hush. Maybe we should start with the bath first, or else it will get cold. Is that all right with you, Mama? 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 Would you like to go to America, Nini? Violetta and Ralph will take you. We'll be good, won't you, Nini? They'll be good to you there. Very good. To my firstborn. Sometimes I want to write and tell mother that I am perhaps the Philippines' first exported domestic helper. She never writes, but during the coldest winters here in Oregon, I linger in the kitchen, the warmest room in the house, still my kingdom, even if the house is not my own. My new employers say that at 40 I should be doing something else, that I'm too bright for the kitchen, 
makes me smile. Kitchens need brightness. Here, I master of the ritual of appeasement, of making better, and ultimately of balance. Here, I know how to keep warm. I fondle the old stones in my head and cast them into the magic pot. Then I add the fateful configurations. Everything will be as it should be. My esophagus its usual leg. My heart and its spleen in the right place. But sometimes, when the flavors got confused, the spleen remembers, and I worry that it might grow heavier than my heart. That I will lose the balance between my love and anger. So I write my letter of recrimination. Time and again, I scribble then dispose it. It embarrasses me, scares me, but maybe I will write it to her sometime, properly and with conviction. Maybe I will even send it. Maybe there's a place for it on the page after all. How do I tell you that we were good kids? That there was no need for your sad, furious hands to set us to right? That I knew how they longed to multiply the meager rice and fish to feed our thousand journeys? And that they could have done so, easily, had they held my limbs with a little more tenderness? How do I say that I have kissed those hands again and again in my dreams, and now I understand, and it's alright.